Let's welcome Wayne Blair and Miranda Tapsell to the stage. Congratulations, both of you. Thank it was you. Such a lovely way to end this forum, too, <laughs> just on such a high note. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, this? You co wrote this screenplay. Could you just start off by telling us all where the idea came from and what inspired you? Oh, absolutely. Um, so, um, uh, I uh, was teaching drama with Josh and um, uh, we, um, he had told me that he just absolutely loved uh, his trip up to the Territory and I was really surprised because most people that um, – it's very rare to meet someone who has been up there and if they have, they talk about how hot and expensive it is. Um, <laughs> so um, – to hear this man talk so fondly of it and be all about the adventure of being up there, the camping, the hiking, the swimming. Um, he uh, – and then uh, – so, so we got common ground from there and then naturally because we were teaching acting students and we were referencing so many films, we realised a great deal of them were rom-coms. <laughs> and um, and I've, I've always – I've always loved them um, and uh, – um, he said to me, we should totally set one up in the Northern Territory. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, I was I was incredibly nervous because I was um, one of those actors that have always dabbled, you know, given given writing a go. And then um, – and, and I sort of never followed it through because I'd get too nervous and go, oh, that's rubbish. No one would want to watch that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I – I realised that I knew a great deal about writing more than I thought I did um, and uh, and it was uh, really great to go on that journey with Josh. Um, and Wayne, you mentioned at the beginning that, that you've known this young lady for quite a few years and obviously you directed her in The Sapphires. Can you talk about your relationship and at what point did you come to Wayne and say, I've got this script? <laughs> um, well... I can't believe it. <laughs> Wayne, can you believe I was 19 when we met? I didn't know that. I, thought, yeah, <laughs> I sure. was in my first year of drama school and um, my acting teacher uh, introduced us, Kevin Jackson. And um, it um, – and – so that was that was where that was where we met. I was quite young, had no idea what I was doing, and then um, and then uh, and I remember getting told at drama school that I was quite charming, but I wasn't very funny. Um, um, <laughs> Take that. <laughs> um, so uh, and then I, I um, I was twenty four when I auditioned for the Sapphires and. Um, Wayne knew how green I was because it was going to be my first feature film if I was going to be cast in it. And I was so grateful that um, – uh, I mean, uh, um, I last night watching Tony Collette really kind of blew me away because um, the just how much, um, how much she said thank you to PJ for believing in me and that's what, that's what Wayne's gone and done. He's – gone and he's gone and shown this shown this girl from Kakadu uh who who just uh came to came to the big smoke when she was 18 because she had a dream and you gave me that yeah but don't don't get us wrong it's not all strawberries and cream she drives me crazy um <laughs> Like oh, I thought like went full Darwin on him. Yeah, yeah, went like families do, you know. But uh, families do that, and you realise that why they're family because you sort of come back and connect, and you have a, a general passion for life and for and for us for story. And so, um, yeah, we've had that connection for a while now. So you you know you, you, when you find it, as Baz said before, you sort of you know you roll with it. Um, and when uh, the producers and Rose and, and, and Miranda and Josh presented this story the first time, it was a, I sort of respectfully passed. I said this wasn't for me at this certain time and, and it happened again. And, um, and then I read another version of the script with a few notes that I gave because it was like whatever because I just want them to get this film up. They're just great people, the, the co-writers are. And then you read it again and, and, and it just it, I really responded to it and I just thought, you know, 
um, just wanted to do it, you know. And um, so that was that was that was sort of simply simply it. Uh, and also like traveling away, and a few a couple of family members had passed away. And you sort of, as a storyteller, I suppose you go, what's important to you? And my culture is important and my country is very important. And also working with people you love is very important. Um, so you put those things together and it becomes easier. You know, it's that art meets commerce type of world. That's great. But sometimes you just um, have to make a couple of little sacrifices. But they're not sacrifices at all. You know, they're not sacrifices at all. It's, 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 it's a joy and it's a great journey. And uh, you wouldn't be dead for quids. So what was your relationship like filming this time? Because the first time Wayne gave you your first film, this time you were also a co-writer and producer. So how was the dynamic any different? Um, I, I feel like because uh, it was um, – sev- I think it's been seven or eight years since we – release the sapphires um so since then wayne's um gone on to you know direct american productions like the 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 adaptation of uh dirty dancing and yes gone on and done so many incredible things and um so i could really see how much he had grown as a director and um also his confidence in the kind of stories he wanted to tell and i really i really needed that i really needed that grounding i really needed that backing um um I think um, having him anchor me was really, really important to this story because I was, I'm still learning my, I'm still learning my gaze. I know it's not Meg Ryan's, so um, it's, it's, it's. I, I know how I see the world and I know how I've lived my life, but to articulate that on the page is a completely different journey. Um, and I didn't have a blueprint for that, and so it was really great for for Wayne to be there and go, okay, this is. I think this is what's going to pay off, and this is what is to prioritise and this is how we're going to make this story sing. What about for you, Wayne? You're talking to your actress but also your co-writer. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, for all the things I said before um, and uh, it just, you know, it was last year. It, it, it was a quick turnaround actually, this this film, mm. because it was last year and we worked on it the second half of last year and then we realised that we were going to Sundance, which was lovely, and then it was coming here. So it, it's it's been a quick journey. You sort of make a film, it might be uh, 18 months until it's released. This one was, it, it, as I said, it, it was it, the sh- turnaround was short. For us, I think it was all those things that we've talked about tonight and the shorthand was there. But also, um, you know, you, you sort of, you know, you go to that karaoke bar on the Friday night, you go try to go back there and, you know, go to the same karaoke bar the next Friday night and it doesn't quite happen. You know, it's not the quite the night that it was the Friday night. You get my metaphor. But um, so, yeah, you know, you sing Jailhouse Rock again, which is my song. But, but, but you have to sort of say six or seven years later, um, we've both had these experiences uh, in, in everything. And then you sort of, you, 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 you have to find a new way. Uh, and it's a new journey. It's, it's like you can't relive there, but you have to be present. And w- what the world is telling you right now and what your family is telling you right now. And the world we live in right now, arguably, is, it's fucking crazy. Um, so to make this type of film in 2018 for us, it was it was it was it was it was it felt real and it felt right, and uh, just with Miranda and myself, the same producers, but then we got new people on board to join us in that journey, and a person, just one person, I could mention right now, Eric Murray Louis. Um, I love seeing his middle name up there, his first name. He's it's his first feature film, and he's a Torres Strait Islander uh, cinematographer, but you know, a cinematographer in his own right. But we did all our short films in the early 2000s together, and he was at film school with Warwick and Rachel and Ivan. But I had never just made that step. So you bring those new people with you, and um, you know, we were in Sundance recently, and you know, Mar- Miranda's there, her husband's there, there's a f- Gwillem's there, the, everyone's there, and you're having a little beer at the bar with some peanuts. And Murray goes to me, this fellow from Townsville, you know, North Queensland, oh, he's a Bronco supporter, but from Townsville, and he goes to me, hey, bro, you know, we like to sort of, you know, you sort of set time, hey, bro, we, we did it, didn't we? And I said, yeah, Murray, we did it, didn't we? And he goes, yes, yeah, cheers, bro. And then the next night you get the same cheers, and you get the same cheers, any old excuse, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, 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 par- it's, it's great, you know, we're, we're, you know, Indigenous filmmakers, filmmakers nonetheless telling our story and sharing these stories and we're just sharing it with you tonight and mm. sharing it with the world. But all good. Oh, can <laughs> Didn't have to round that up, but just all good. Yeah. Can I just quickly add an incredible story about 
Murray. Um, he, um, when we were in when we were in Catherine Gorge, uh, we went before the sun came up, and it was incredibly cold because it's just a little, it's just a little ice bucket when there's no sun. And uh, it rose over the escarpment, and um, and he was tell and he was telling me, oh sis, we need we need to, you need to face this way because the lights reflecting off the escarpment onto you and just crazy things like that where he used um and and when we were at the helicopter uh when we we're hawk dreaming in kakadu like when um when lauren's throwing the uh, football and everything it was bushfires were happening so it was uh it was um uh the seasonal burning for the rangers and he was saying oh Miranda, all that smoke's um, sort of capturing the sun and the light from the sun and turning it into a spotlight. And it just blew my mind how he was using – it was just – it was Indigenous filmmaking. It was He was using his Indigenous knowledge to um, to light us and film us. It was amazing. And we had a budget, a small budget nonetheless, and I suppose you don't come with three trucks or you don't have uh, – people, filmmakers, you don't have the pre-lighting of a day and then you can just switch a light on at 7 o'clock. Uh, I suppose we had one truck, and so yeah, Murray was just uh, in, in Northern Territory is a different light to any part of Australia, as any part of Australia is a different light to Northern Territory. So you just had to have someone that sort of was there and uh, just had shot up there so many documentaries that are uh, well, you know, class. And so he just came on board and put up his hand, and we said yes, <laughs> come with us. And you shot on Tiwi Island, right? Yes, we did with all my family. Um, so I didn't grow up on the islands, um, and I th and I think um, that's really important to note that um, I didn't have that knowledge, even though I've got that connection. So um, and so, I really needed to be honest about that, and I'm so grateful that our um, production manager Libby Collins, uh, her brother played the priest, oh. uh, <laughs> Rob. Um, um, and he's he's a, he's done many things on Australian television. He's he's our he's our Sydney Portier, uh, <laughs> and um, and so anyway, she's talking. So she's talking to particularly the old ladies in the choir, um, and just being incredible, making sure that uh, our intentions were incredibly transparent, and letting them know that um, they're not they're not um, the punchline. Um, they are where they're to celebrate them, their art, their songs, their love of family, and um, and that was what was so beautiful also about the Mire and the Jawan and um, the Larakia. Uh, that uh, everyone was so everyone really embraced this film wholeheartedly, and they were very excited to show their country off. And it, all it took was us to kind of come up and say hi. That was. That, that was the best thing for me um, and I got to I got to learn my traditional dance um, something I never got an opportunity to learn um, and uh, that song at the very that song um, that the women danced to at the party at the reception um, they wrote that song for Lauren uh, to welcome Lauren back um, so uh, but roughly it translate as you know here's here's our daughter our niece our our dear loved one who's come back home and we've missed you and it's so great that you're home so yeah hearing that for the first time I was a snotty mess um <laughs> and I'm so glad it ended up in the film <laughs> yeah it's, it's that weird world where art meets life and um just being a um a fly on the wall when that happens and you realize these people are coming on this journey with you and, and you know that day we were filming at the church we didn't get three days it was just one day for both scenes so you're on the money you have to know what you're doing in your shot selection and performance from miranda and Gwillem and the ladies um that day was a major semi-final of an afl game in australia <laughs> So you can imagine, they, they, these guys, yeah, they're getting paid and it's, it's beautiful culture and stuff, but they still got an AFL grand final to watch, you know. <laughs> so every between takes, they just went, hey, what's the game? And the Bulldogs are winning that day, which is great for us because a lot of Bulldog supporters. But you, 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 when, you're, when you're shooting on country, you're, they're just real people. So beforehand, the pre, for any mob out there that want to shoot you know, the mob, you know, there's lots of cups of teas, a lot of sitting down, not talking about the film, not talking about football, talking about family and journey. And it was great that Miranda was from there because she was our spear point. 
So you had this little spear point that went through that community. You can see how vivacious and charming but real she is. And you have that person that wants to learn and you sort of, hey, we're going to tell a film about this young person that wants to learn. Hey, that's good. Let's take advantage of this. And um, But they were all there for us. And, and in the end, many cups of tea and many, you know, talking about, you know, they didn't like I was an ambassador of the Sydney Swans, but that was okay. <laughs> but, um, but they liked Adam Goods. So, but uh, that was good. But, um, you know, uh, it, it, all those cups of tea and then they just come with you. And it's not just cups of tea it's talking and communicating what you're going to do because a lot of those people a lot of those countries have been usurped by idiots before so you do it the right way with a good mob and you can get something a product that you can share and they haven't seen it yet they haven't seen it yet so that's what i'm saying about adelaide and we're going to show the film up on tv and catherine and kakadu so that'll, that'll be nice and special. So, so none of the people in the <coughs> Tiwi wedding shots were professional actors? They were all... No, no, they weren't. And they thought it was my actual wedding. So they pulled Gwillem aside and they're like, listen here, if you heard it, you got me to deal with, you know? And they're like, where's the food? I'm hungry. How long is this ceremony going on for? This long time, this wedding? <laughs> it, was, it, was very, very, it was very, very funny. They were amazing. Like that grandmother and grandfather in the church, when Ursula and Miranda come and meet them, they, they, we, we just did a little audition on my iPhone with Libby, and Miranda was there, and I was playing a couple of characters, and they sort of were like, yep, cool. They didn't audition. They didn't sort of rehearse on the day because it was – so not disrespectful, but you know that they're here, and you know that they're doing 10-hour days – and uncle there was not, he wasn't feeling unwell, but you sort of just get them up and you explain it and they know, yeah, yeah, go away, go away. You know, and then they just do it. And it's pretty, pretty special when we were, all the crew were there and uh, there's no audition, there's no, no rehearsals. That first scene I think you shot when he comes over and says hello to Ursula, Daphne, was what's remaining in the film. Well, I mean, it's a spectacular look. It, it is a commercial for the Northern Territory, really. Um, and yet it's so it looks so remote that i can't imagine it would have been easy to shoot um in terms of bringing crews and everything into some of those remote areas was it were there tough difficulties in filming up there can you talk about that yeah uh, that's you know you're doing all that in six weeks so you sort of you know there's a couple of six uh, six day weeks but uh no it was it was we're on the we're on the front foot yes totally so uh but the weather was good for us we did things the right way so it, it turned out fine, you know. Um, we, we went from Tiwi to Kakadu to Catherine to Adelaide and then back to Tiwi for the last, you know, seven or two weeks. Um, so, yeah, we're on the front foot, but I think everyone was pretty prepared. It was funny, like, we had the key to Kakadu. So those mob out there, we just said, here, come on this part where no other white fellows or black fellows come. So we had all that area where she sees that hawk. That was all untouched area where no one sort of filmed before. And they just let you go out there. But also on the Sundays and the Saturdays, you have know, five-day weeks. And then you get a you – know, Murray and I went out, you know, we'd get the sunset and sun. No one's getting paid. But And then the AC camp, like, can we join you guys? Hey, hey, you guys aren't getting paid, Jack. Ricky, you're not getting paid. No, no, but we're going to Kakadu. We're going to go to Kakadu on a four-wheel drive. Uncle's there. He's going to take us round. He's got no shoes on. We're in high grass. Let's just – can we please go out with you? He said, of course. And so we just sort of did things, um, you know, by any means necessary really. And so it was good. And just a quick question before I open up to the audience about your leading man. Um, how did his casting come about? Yeah, um, so it was it, – um, uh, it was a very interesting story. We we auditioned lots of lots of talented actors from from Australia and the UK, and um, and I just happened to be over in I just happened to be over in London with my uh, husband James, and um, and uh, the casting agent. Um, uh, she said she was begging, practically begging me to meet Willem in person. She's like, if you're in London, can you please, please meet him? And I was like, come on, I'm on my holiday. Like, I don't want to meet, I don't, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to work. <laughs> um, uh, I was just so, I was just so burnt out from all the writing. Um, but I obliged and, um, and then I... And then I, and then I heard this like really sort of softly spoken uh, English voice. Hello, I'm Gwilym, and um, and uh, he came in, and he's you know this tall, lanky dude um, who was who was just who just had this playful twinkle in his eye. That was obviously um, who 
was very understanding of Lauren's situation and kept rather than um, rather than pushing back and going, oh, you're too difficult. It was more like, okay, this is incredibly frustrating, but what can I do to help you? And that was the essence of Ned that I hoped for and that I wanted. And I loved that um, as a result of that, you know, a lot of people – uh, that have watched the film have said, I just love that there's no toxic masculinity in this film. Um, they're incredibly proud and so he was perfect for it. And he's now on his way after Bohemian Rhapsody. Too. Oh, yeah. I've just, I've just got him just in time. <laughs> he practically ripped off his Brian May perm and... <laughs> came fly, came flying down to came flying down to Perth and then up to um, Darwin. It was quite a journey for him. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Adelaide. And um, yeah, he was he was just such a warm, humble dude. Despite the fact that he and he didn't admit to me that he was in he was he wasn't like oh I'm playing Brian May, no big deal. He was just like yeah I'm just. Um, yeah, thank you for seeing me. Thank you for filling in time. I've I've just been busy shooting this this film. It's kind of my you know kind of my first big film that I that I um and then all of a sudden everyone's like yeah he's, he was playing Brian May and I was like what I was I was literally the last person to know. <laughs> well, let's open it up for a few questions from the audience. Yeah, that was one of the trickiest things. Uh, I now live in Melbourne, but I wasn't living in Melbourne when we, when when Josh and I were writing um, the the show, and he was living out in Kyneton, so we were constantly having to do passes at things and um, and sending them to each other and um, putting it all to and then putting it all together and then sending it off, um, and yeah, that I think that got a bit tough at times because. Um, Josh is so lovely and he's constantly willing for his world to be opened up. So it's not as if he and I ever came against um, – we never clashed in that way. But it was it was really hard because um, uh, we didn't – I guess we didn't want – I think a lot of people really wanted it to not matter that Lauren was Aboriginal and, and, th- and that doesn't – that doesn't mean that that's not an, an, being an offensive in an offensive way, but I guess they were trying to say, why can't we just make her like, why can't we just make her like Meg Ryan? And I guess I sort of had to say, well, sorry, she doesn't live in New York. She doesn't have that kind of money. Um, and while she's a very successful lawyer, like what is like her, just her perspective on the world is very different. And, ha- and what is that perspective? And how do we not, um, how do we not overwhelm people to a world that they probably haven't seen before? But that, and that's the problem. I was like, they need to know all of this. <laughs> and that's really tricky. Um, but uh, as, as um as I've learnt from uh, the wonderful Nora Ephron, she's constantly talking about simplifying it um, because what what is the key to being a romantic comedy is that it's funny and that it's romantic. <laughs> so um, it, it was a big process for me. It was such a learning it was such a learning curve. But uh, to have Josh uh, by my side was very very uh, important and wonderful. <laughs> The question was that do will that will necessarily the themes of um, of uh, <laughs> tradition and culture and connection necessarily resonate with other Australians and um, and you know that that sort of was on that sort of was on my mind because uh, there's um, uh, lots of people will be able to. Um, uh, Sorry, I'll start again. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just really like nervous. <laughs> um, uh, what has been so lovely about this film is that so many, so many young girls have come up to me, and uh, oh, and young women as well. They've come up to me and said, "Oh, look, I'm, I'm not Aboriginal, but I know what it's like to walk between the two worlds." Um, I think, uh, I think one thing I should really point out is that. Um, when you go to Sydney or Melbourne, it is it is it is it is not as multicultural as uh, New York is. I can't believe uh, the amount of Spanish I hear in the street. It is just incredible, and um, uh, it is you know there's just pockets of people in different places, and so I guess people can feel very disconnected because they might be Italian, Greek, Chinese. 
um, Muslim, Catholic, and they just they just don't know where they fit because um, quite often to be a, to celebrate being Australian means to celebrate being white and uh, to fit in you have to give up your otherness to to make it to survive um, so and so I think that's something that resonates with a lot of with a lot of people whether they're Aboriginal or not there were policies in place for Aboriginal people which made it a very different story um, Aboriginal people had to fit in by law they had to give up their Aboriginality um, but a, a lot of a lot of migrant communities identify with this and that's and that's I, I and that was a gamble and I love that it paid off All right, before we finish I want to just ask about Cher your co-star the dog oh, yes we haven't mentioned the dog hello <laughs> How the heck did that dog work out? I mean, dogs don't always do what they're told, do they? Uh, the dog, a uh, sure, a uh, fly, I should say, fly. We had two dogs, and they were, you know, they were in support of each other. They were a beautiful little team. <laughs> I'll tell you one story about it. The, the fly was great, except for the rap party. True story. A fly went missing at the rap party, just like any other actor does or something. So like, where are they going? Is fly met someone in the toilets? We you know what, what's happening with fly. And Fly was walk, running around the Darwin Ski Club just like, I'm, I'm Fly, I'm sure. You know, he wasn't doing that, but she wasn't doing that. But we lost Fly in the end. But Fly during it and our dog handlers were great. But that was a story about Fly at the rap party, which <laughs> you expect me to be like, you know, oh, crazy or something. But it was Fly. <laughs> so I, I'd Fly, if, sorry, I don't, won't go on about that. I'm, if Fly's listening, anyone knows of Fly, just don't. Anyway, hashtag fly. Anyway, whatever. I don't. Sorry, shut up. Oh, Wayne has Wayne has said, "Oh my gosh, you and Josh just put everything in this. Like the most difficult sort of the most isolated parts of Australia, where you know, and uh, the dog, and just <laughs> you just and um. But if there's one thing I've learnt, it's like um. What's what's the saying? So, oh my shoe fell off again. Um, <laughs> If there's a, uh, what's that famous saying? Like, uh, don't ask for permission, beg for forgiveness. <laughs> it's how I added Janet into it. <laughs> it's how I added Escapade. Um, quick story, wrote a letter to her and they're like, and, um, and I was like, dear Miss Jackson, I need you to know how much a fan I am of your work. And there's so many people in the community that love your work as well. Uh, if you can please let me have like a couple of seconds of escapade in here in your in my movie it'd be so great and then we uh she didn't write back to me but basically sony said miss jackson says yes oh. <laughs> <laughs> well we're all gonna go upstairs for the last party and do some janet jackson dancing now i think fabulous so thank you so much wayne and miranda and thank congratulations you. again